Hi, morning everybody. Um, as promised, uh, I am posting a video now based on the poll that we took um, a couple of days ago on Facebook uh, about some of the topics that you guys would want me to cover. And uh, there were a few topics uh, that were mooted, uh, namely how to raise finance for uh, title splitting projects. Um, how to source title splitting uh, projects itself and how can you find some of these. The other topics that was uh, mooted on the poll was uh, the process of buying uh, bigger projects for title splitting uh, on auctions and what is it that you have to think about when you're doing so. And the last one uh, was uh, one of our other guys that commented and uh, added a new section, which is case studies and deal analysis. So these are the kind of the four things that um, were put out for poll. And the main one that everybody voted on uh, that they wanted to know more about um, was how to raise finance. So in the video now, um, you'll hear me talk about really the five key ways of raising finance that I follow and I coach people also of how to do it. So let's get to it and uh, and look at what, what you know what are the options available to us. So the next uh, finance mechanism that I use um, for title splitting projects uh, is by way of bridging finance. So I've already spoken about cash, investor finance, buying with delayed completion. Uh, and now this video, I'm gonna, uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about bridging finance and how uh, we can use these mechanisms to actually purchase uh, larger properties that are right for uh, title splitting and lease creation and um, multiple units creation. So in terms of, um, as, a, as a mechanism, it's actually uh, not a bad one to use um, bridging finance because one, they're much more specialist in um, these type of lending. They invest a bit of time and effort to actually get, get to understand A, the, the actual project itself, uh, what you're trying to achieve with it, and um, and would there be any kind of value um, at the end of it. So one of the things that is really good because uh, when you apply, um, you will have to pay for a commercial surveyor to go out and actually survey the block. Uh, but what's helpful is A, they come back with their recommendation. That's also very helpful for you because you get to understand from their point of view, a commercial surveyor is actually quite a skilled professional that um, they will be able to give a good flavor of what they think you may be able to achieve based on the plans that you you are suggesting. So let's say for example, you're buying a block of eight flats and the commercial surveyor will go out and actually check uh, a, the square meterage, the area, um, your proposed plans of what you're trying to do and comment based on their local expertise and um, assessment what they think those individual flats will be worth after you've done the works that you put on the schedule of works um, and what is it that you they think you could actually then achieve as an aggregate of value uh, and that then helps the lenders to decide whether they will be willing to lend you uh, the money to buy the place or not. So from a kind of uh, finance perspective, bridging finance is quite helpful in that way. Um, the challenges are um, that you have to pay quite hefty fees to begin with. So there's an arrangement fee once you borrow money from bridging finance, you have to pay there, like I talked about, the commercial um, surveyor, but that's quite helpful for yourself as well. You will also have to pay their legal fees, the bridging finance legal fees, as well as your own. And that can be quite expensive as well. On average, you know, you're looking at, you know, most bridging finance will be charging maybe between one to two percent of the value of the loan so if you're borrowing a million pounds you're looking at straight away to twenty thousand pounds worth of um arrangement fee that a bridger will ask you the second thing uh, that are not so great with bridging finance is um if the project that you buy uh, because of the complexity of the actual project itself sometimes things run away you know they run over uh, if you get stuck on a bridging um, loan that can be quite costly and uh, for example I had one project where uh, land registered took about three months to register a uh, a deed alteration uh, and that then cost quite a bit of money uh, per month in additional interest that we had to pay the bridger so 
uh, there are some risks and there are some costs attached to um, bridging finance but in the long term I guess you know if you if it's a case of not doing the project or doing the project but being very open and understanding of where the challenges are uh, with bridging finance I'd, I'd definitely choose the bridges uh, option the good thing about bridging is it allows you like I said to to get into these projects you know generally speaking they want you to put a bit of you know a, a a, you know decent skin in the game on the project so between 30 to 35 percent deposit that they'll expect you to find so then they'll fund the 65 uh, percent outstanding um they also spend a bit of time to understand your strategy on this block so they're not quick to just say no but they want to understand how it works and what kind of output of value you're going to create so that they can also make sure that they'll get their money back uh, as well as their interest and um and and some of the uh, the kind of the better bridges, I guess, if you like, uh, the one that represent that, that looks closer to a bank than a uh, a loan shark, I guess, uh, tend to offer a bridge to term product. So that means basically you could start on a bridge with them, but then once the product uh, or the development is ready, you'll refinance and you will move from a bridging finance to a term finance like your normal buy to let so those type of lenders tend to be very uh, attractive because they are um they understand the market and they offer a end-to-end -end product actually so you don't end up having to pay again resurvey again move uh, lenders again um to be able to release your money out so that's um that's bridging finance for you uh, on title splitting on the next video next segment i'm going to talk about the last one which is buying with um to you a buy to let mortgage.